Hello everybody, and welcome to part two of our beginner's guide to Dark Souls. Today I'm going to try to do Undead Berg as a melee character instead of using my bow and arrows. So let's see how this goes. So far, so good. Draw this guy down. Backstab him. Use our eye frames. So now this next part is a little bit tricky. You've got to time this fireball just right and go. Sprint through here and then fight this guy over here. Try not to parry too soon. So that's the way that you take care of this part if you're melee. Don't forget to take that rat out. He will follow you around a little bit. Up the stairs. I'm not going to go to the bottom part here. We just have no reason to go down there. Body pull him. He's stuck behind those barrels. If you look through the window here. You can see that. Where is he? Oh well. Run up and backstab him. Use our eye frames again. These invincibility frames are definitely something that helps me get through the game. And if you're not good at parrying, you can always backstab fish. So we ran up here and we triggered that guy by himself. Run up and trigger the next guy. Now remember we need to use this wall to protect ourselves from from the arrows, or the crossbow bolts from the guy up there. It's very... We have a smaller area that we can actually hide in right now. So ignore that last guy, run up here. Take him out. And now we can wait for the other guy to come up. Or we can go down. And chase him around. If he doesn't want to come up. Just block, and then while he's staggered, you can come around behind him and get that backstab. So this guy, will just body pull him again. If you're careful, you only get one guy at a time, which is what we want. If you have too many, it's really easy to get killed. So we'll let him come up, 
parry and repost. Down here, you saw me do all of this already as melee. But I'm coming down here because I'm going to buy that bottomless box and a few more arrows. Here we go. And never have enough arrows, guys. You really never have enough Thank arrows. Yeah. At least if you're playing dexterity based. We'll go up here. One of the places I didn't show you before was just in here. There is a bonfire, but we'll come back to it later. Uh, there's really no need to rest here just yet. It can be a little bit tricky to come out of the door and have all the guys down here respawn. So, this part here is a little bit tricky as a melee character. So we'll sprint up here. And then sprint back. Parry, repost, iframes. Parry, repost. And. Oh, he dropped us something. That was nice of him. So now we just have this guy to deal with here. Again, just in case if you need a more practice at it, we'll use the shield and block and then attack him. Bring your shield up around the corner there. Because that guy's waiting to jump you. Alright, the part up here can get a little bit tricky. As a melee character. What we're going to do actually is we're going to run back down. And try to draw him down the stairs because he throws those fire bombs. Throw a couple and then it'll walk back towards us again. Maybe. He doesn't want to come down this time. So we just had to run up and kill him. So this guy... We got him and the axe guy is still coming down. Alright. Now we have to take these guys out, otherwise they will run after us. That you have to do very quickly. You just have to throw your hands up and say, forget it, let's just go and hope that we get lucky so I've got two soft humanity now and you remember last time I had 150 item discovery now the second one only gives you eight more item discovery 
Just wanted to point that out. If you're having trouble with this area and with the boss in particular, the Taurus Demon, you can do, uh, you can farm these guys, these um, hollow warriors, that's what I call them, um, that's what I believe that they're called. You can farm them and they drop titanite shards and there is a blacksmith that's accessible directly from firelink i will show you him later but he can upgrade any of your weapons to plus five be careful there that you don't pull both of them by mistake Last guy, you can just run up here. So he comes down. Now there's nothing stopping us from getting to the boss. I'd like to show everybody... I did not come down here last time. You'll see this black knight. And over here, there's really nothing. I think the developers actually put this here so that if you're locked onto the night you can really uh, run into trouble and head down that way and trap yourself. Let's top ourselves off and see if we can take this guy on. Sixty nine damage. Let's run up here and we'll go up here where we'll have more room to maneuver. The easiest way to take him on keep your shield up, get behind him, and backstab. Keep your shield up. Always keep your shield up with him. Just backstab fish. And it's really not too hard. Again, if you're moving in the direction that he is turning, it's not too bad. It's much easier to get the backstab on him. Patience is the key. If you try to rush in here and kill him, then you will probably die. Be patient. Fish for that backstab. And it looks like a couple more backstabs and we'll get him. broke my guard there all right one more there we go and he gave us a tight night chunk. That was very nice of him. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can get his sword, which is a very good strength weapon and a very good quality weapon. But it's not very good for dex builds because it's so heavy. So down here, he was guarding a blue tear stone ring, which we're going to go ahead and equip. I took the tiny beings ring as my gift to begin, that's how I already have that equipped. 
what that does is it just gives me a little bit more hit points to start with. So let's go up here and we will take care of the boss. I'm going to show you guys the easiest way for a beginner to take down the Taurus demon. First, let's check our equipment. We have the pine resin. We're also going to set up our fire bombs. And just in case if we miss, we'll set up some black fire bombs. All right. What the resin does is it changes the element of your attack so that it has, in this case, it will have lightning damage. There's other pine resin. So as soon as you get through the fog you want to you want to climb those stairs and get up here because these guys will shoot you from behind if you don't okay let's head down Now when you get up here, you see this block that's right in the middle. It had a it had a message right in front of it. Once you cross this block, that is what triggers the boss to spawn. So we apply our lightning resin, our gold pine resin, and we climb up this ladder. Two hand our weapon when we get to the top, and up our two. Change it to single hand, bait an attack, and then firebomb. Bait an attack, and firebomb. And firebomb. That one I couldn't dodge. That one I didn't block. Bait an attack. And firebomb. I threw that last one while he was jumping. That could have been bad. I could have died there. But I figured why not try it. And we got lucky. So let's heal up and head down here and see what was behind this fog. As you walk over here you'll see a glow behind these chests. It is a large soul of a lost undead. This door we can't get through just yet. If we look over here, we can see scorch marks on the ground. Those scorch marks I mean there's probably something with fire coming up. But let's go down here and see what's down here. This guy's still there. He's everybody's favorite character. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow, far from it. I am Solaire of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. You find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. Of course we have a moment for you. you. Might see it. Our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Yes. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. 
We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> So we have the white sign soapstone. What we do is we will use that to drop our signature. Let's get down to fast roll. Dropping our signature will allow other players to summon us. And then we can help them. When you're not sure of an area that is a great way to learn it, is be summoned into somebody else's area. You get to do two things. One, you get their souls. Well, half of the souls that they get, uh, you also receive. You don't steal them from them. Two, you get a chance to learn the area. And then, most importantly, there's no real risk to you. If you die ten seconds into it, you don't lose anything. So, this part, what we're going to do is sprint from here all the way up, and then on the right there's a cubby, a little indentation you can see halfway down. Uh, there are actually stairs there. We're going to head there. So, let's sprint. Just ignore these guys, because that happens. Now, remember that bonfire I showed you just a few minutes ago? It's right here. But before you go and check it out, make sure you kick that ladder. That way, you can climb back up. That ladder wasn't there before. So let's rest at this bonfire here. Let's repair everything. I like to repair everything just in case if something happens and I need it later on. Let's put our short bow back on. We're just about done with it, so it's not a big deal. Let's go up here, and at this point in the game, this is an easy way to farm some souls, but you do have to have patience to go back and forth. All you have to do to farm those souls again is run back down here, rest at the bonfire, and come back up. So, let's proceed. Now, you see that tail there? We're going to shoot it. I always aim for the left side of that gap and then when the tail has that little pause there I fire and then when he comes here I try to get it again takes about 30 hits to cut the tail off but once you cut the tail off you're going to be rewarded with an item um, we'll see what the item is in a minute here but I'm not going to be using it it's a good item for a first time player however People tend to rely on it for too long into the game, and they don't understand how to do the upgrades. 
So, I'm going to try to run this with more conventional weapons. If I get lucky on some drops, I probably won't use the weapons unless it's specifically a dexterity based weapon that you can get in normal means, normal play of the game also. I will try to keep from using any rare items and rare, rare weapons, but anything that's a normal drop is going to be fair game. Anything that I buy or find will be fair game. Um, just a couple more hits. We should have this. This one just takes a little bit of patience to get. Oh. So we've got the Drake Sword. Let me show you it real quick. I do not have the strength. I do not have the strength. It requires 16 strength and I've got 12 strength. So. I would have to two-hand it to even use it. At this point in the game, it does amazing damage. It does better damage than my short sword that we've been using so far. However, it does not scale with any, any of our stats. So therefore, it won't get any better until we find dragon scales to upgrade it. So, the trap is that it's so good to begin the game that you kind of just forget about the other weapons and you don't know how to properly use them. So we're going to stick with the short sword for now. And we'll see how far we can get with that. So you run around here. There's nothing here. But around this corner here is this guy. Notice how we did not kill him. It takes more damage than what we can put out right now. Wow. This next room can be a little bit tricky. I like to use my arrows. And then I can use them to draw these guys out. Because otherwise, they're rather mean. Oh, we fell. And of course he had a humanity. Because that's how it usually works out. The ones that drop your humanity, you lose. But the rats can be used to farm hard humanity, which can be great use later in the game. Or even now, for providing that protection that it that it does. Okay, up here, there are steps going up, but we're going to skip that for now. A beginning player should not go up there. And if we look down here, there's a gate blocking our path. So we've only got one direction we can go, and that's up here. ourselves off. 
let's go back to fast roll. So that bore, we'll come back and deal with the bore later. I'm going to run through this area twice again. But let's start with the first time. What we're going to do is we're going to run over here and then sprint up these steps. Jump and roll. And... We've only got this guy to deal with right now. So let's parry and repost him. Sometimes you get unlucky and those other two guys make it around too. So, now that we're on this side of the gate, none of them can get through. They're just gonna sit over there and be mad at us. We'll come back and we'll actually do that the way that most people are going to at the beginning of the game. Now this halberd is a weapon that I intend to use but right now it requires 16 strength which we don't have but we are going to use that halberd these guys are tougher than the warriors that we've been facing even a parry with a repost does not kill that guy We want to draw this one out with an arrow, to the face preferably. Let's backstab fish him. And as he starts to get up, if you hit up R2, you usually hit him with that attack. And if you miss, he'll still be getting up, so that means that you won't lose anything there. But as we come through here, there's another one. And this guy is mean. When he puts his sword like that... When he puts his sword like that, he will... Repost. He will parry and repost you. He's one of the few enemies in the game that can do that. So, you have to be careful of him. That Baronique Knight back there is somebody that we will take care of later. But, that'll be in the next episode. As you come up to these steps, start walking. because of him. He dropped us a tight night shard. That's nice of him. We'll be using that soon. They tend to drop tight night shards more often than these regular hollow warriors. That guy did not want to fight. He just wanted to stand there with his shield up. Okay. So when we come down here, we can see that there's a fog here. We can see down there that is the area that we ran through before. And that guy is waiting to snipe us. He moved over there. Alright. So, 
sneak up on this guy and try to backstab him. When he takes that pose, you're going to want to shoot him with an arrow instead. Let's keep backing up. Fight him up here. Oh. I tried a cheap tactic, but it did not work. Stay away from the wall. If you hit the wall, it will ruin your blade real quick. These guys have Estus flasks. They will heal them up. We don't like that. Alright, so we've got this area down here to contend with next. Three hollows, not too bad. Except one of them is ranged. So now we need to Now we need to watch ourselves. And we died. That was my fault. Entirely my fault. But that's okay. That's part of the game. But, we're getting up to a little bit long here, so I think I'm going to call it for now, and we will start off the next episode right here. Thank you all for joining me for Dark Souls. Once again, this is Funzer. Have a good day.